Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. Thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we continue on chapter 5, which is CPU scheduling. So in this CPU scheduling, we will learn about the algorithm. Okay, there are the things, subtopics that we will learn throughout this chapter. Okay, we will learn about the scheduling criteria, scheduling algorithms such as round robin, and then multiple processor scheduling and real time CPU scheduling. So those are the subtopics that we will cover for this chapter five. So at the end of the chapter, okay, we should able to know the basis of say uh, scheduling okay so <coughs> this chapter will introduce you with the cpu scheduling which is the basis of the multi-program operating system second to describe the various type of scheduling algorithm number three to discuss the evaluation criteria for selecting a CPU scheduling. Okay, what are the criteria in order to select which algorithm that is suitable for a particular system? And number four, to examine the scheduling algorithm of several operating system. So basically, these are the things that we will learn throughout the chapter five about the CPU scheduling. So the next part, we go for the overview of CPU scheduling. So these are the basic concepts. Here we have uh, CPU. And then maximum CPU utilization obtained with the multi-programming. And then we have the CPU input-output for burst cycle. The process execution consists of the cycle of CPU execution and waiting for the input and output and then we have cpu burst followed by the input output burst cpu burst distribution is of main concern so these are the basic concepts so we have the cpu burst we have the io burst input output burst so the, the the first part is we will it will load store add to store and then read from a file and then we have the process of wait for the input output and then store the increment index like the counterpart and write to the file and then wait for the input and output load store add a store and then read from the file wait for input and output so these are the basic concept we have the cpu burst we have the input output Burst. So this process is like like a cycle. Okay, the process of execution, uh, it look like a cycle. Load and then eat and then read and then it will read. Store, write and then it will do it again. So these are the basic concept of the uh, scheduling. This one is the histogram of the CPU burst time. So it, we base on the frequency. So at this Y value, we have the frequency and at the X value, we have the burst duration in millisecond. Okay, next, we go for the CPU scheduler. Okay, short term scheduler select from among the processes in ready queue and allocate the cpu to one of them yeah, here we have the term that we call as short term scheduler so this scheduler will select from the processes that are already in the cpu and then allocate the cpu to one of them to run the process so queue may be ordered in various way means the process of queuing may be in various way and then cpu scheduling decision may take place when a process one switches from running to waiting state second switches from the running to ready state third switches from the waiting to ready 
and for the minutes so these are the things that can uh, or the possibility okay the possibility uh, that could exist before the speed scheduling make a decision okay next is this patcher so this partial model give control of the CPU to the process selected by the short term scheduler. We have the short term scheduler. Okay, and then this this partial will control the CPU before the CPU can process the selected scheduler. Okay, so this part involves the switching context. The switching to the user mode, as we know that we have the user mode and the kernel mode, switching to the user mode and jumping to the proper location in the user program to restart the program. Okay, dispatch latency means that time is take for the dispatcher to stop one process and start another running. Uh, latency is about something that we can say as a quite delay part. A waiting part before we can start another process next we go for the scheduling criteria one refer to the cpu utilization we need to keep the cpu as busy as possible so the scheduling criteria is based on the cpu utilization based on our cpu the type that we have for computer system Second is about the throughput of processes that complete their execution per time units. Throughput means uh, the time that taken for one process to complete the process. And then we have the turnaround time, amount of time to execute a particular process. Waiting time, amount of time a process have been waiting in a ready queue waiting time uh, for the process and then we have the response time amount of time is take from when a request was submitted until the first response is produced okay, this one is not uh, uh, the response time uh, based on the request okay, when the request uh, being sent or submitted uh, what are the response time Next, we have the scheduling algorithm optimization criteria. So based on the maximum CPU utilization, maximum throughput, uh, minimum turnaround time, minimum waiting time, and minimum response time. So these are the criteria on the scheduling algorithm optimization. Okay, next, we go for non-preemptive scheduling. So non non preemptive scheduling is the process when we allocate to the CPU and the resource we will hold the process until it complete its execution. When we have the process, we already allocate the process to the CPU, and the resource of our computer system will hold that process until it's complete its execution. Or change its state to waiting for the state from ready state. So in this case, we cannot interrupt until the process completes and execution or switch its state. So this type of scheduling is rigid. Non preemptive scheduling has not overheat of the scheduling the processes. Okay, there is no cost associated with non preemptive scheduling, and in non preemptive scheduling, the process has long burst time in executing. Then, the other method which has less burst time may stop. You can recall back what is the CPU burst and input output burst. So, at this non preemptive scheduling, 
the process already there we already allocated into the cpu and they need to be whole the resource will be whole the process until it complete the execution complete the execution or switch from one state to another state okay let's say waiting state goes to the next ready state So the first algorithm that we can see first, we have the first come, first serve, FC, FS. So in this algorithm, means whatever process that come first, it will serve first by the CPU. So we have the process and we have the burst time. Okay, suppose that the process arrive in order P1, P2, P3. Okay, P1, P2, P3. The time is here so we need to process the p1 first because first come first serve so the best time is needed 24 and then this one for process 2 is 3 so 24 25 26 7 and then after that you process the process 3 the best time is 3 so process 3 27 28 29 30 so waiting time for process 1 is zero because this is the first process okay so waiting time for process two is 24 and waiting time for p3 is 27 okay waiting time uh, for p1 before it being executed is zero because when p1 is arrived it will uh immediately process start the process and then p2 need to wait until 24 time 24 then it will execute while p3 it need to wait until time 27 then it will be executed so average waiting time for those process equal to 70 0 plus 24 plus 27 divided by number of the processes which is 3 so it's equal to 17 suppose that the processes arrive in the order p2 p3 and p1 so the count chart for the schedule is p2 first and then p3 and then p1 it based on first come the serve so which order okay so in this example here waiting time for p1 is equal to 6 waiting time for p2 is equal to 0 and waiting time for p3 is equal to 3 so average waiting time is 6 plus 0 plus 3 divided by number of the processes okay so it's equal to 3 this process is much better compared to the previous case so short process behind the long process and consider the CPU bound and many input output bound processes convoy effect. At this order, uh, we give the priority to the short process behind the process. So if we compare this piece with the previous one, with the previous one, so average waiting time for the second second uh case is better compared to the previous one. Previous one we have seventeen. This case we have only three. Yeah, the next part is about the shortest job first, SJF. Associate with each process the length of its next CPU burst. So use this length to schedule the process with the shortest so we find the shortest job first okay, let's say we have three processes so we identify the shortest process then we execute the shortest part first so sjf is optimal it gives the minimum average time for given set of processes this can be proved by the previous is that we have process one process two and process three the difficulty is knowing the length of the next cpu request 
okay if we want to uh, use this algorithm the difficulty here is about to know what are the duration for the next cpu request so for this part we can ask the user example here we have p1 p2 p3 and p4 arrival time 0 0.0 2.0 4.0 and 5.0 then we have burst time 6 8 7 and 3 so we look at this sjf scheduling chart here we have uh, the shortest the shortest okay the shortest process is equal to before okay, before only have three and okay, the next part is p1 and then p3 and then p2 so average time for waiting is okay, 3 plus 16 plus 9 plus 0 divided by 4 equal to 7 so this is how the sjf work the first come and first serve <clears throat> number three is about priority priority number integer is associated with each process so the cpu is allocated to the process with the highest priority means from the smallest integer to the highest priority so we have preemptive and non-preemptive here so in sjf the priority scheduling where the priority is the inverse of the predicted next the cpu burst okay. the problem here is about the starvation and low priority processes may never execute and the solution here is about the aging as time progresses increase the priority of the process okay so next let's look at the uh, example of the priority algorithm so let's say we have five processes we have p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 and then we have the burst time and priority p1 we have 10 burst time and priority 3 p2 1 and 1 p3 2 and 4 p4 we have 1 and 5 and then p5 5 and 2 so using the priority scheduling the first is refer to the p2 because the priority is one here and then after p2 we go for the p5 and then after p5 we go to p1 okay after p1 we go for p3 after p3 we go for p4 it's based on the priority priority 1 priority 2 priority 3 priority 4 and priority 5 so average waiting time here we have uh, 0 plus 1 and then plus 7 and so on and then divide by 5 then at the end we get 8.2 millisecond so this example on how priority algorithm work so done for the preemptive scheduling so the next part okay the next part we go for the preemptive scheduling so in the next video we will discuss about the preemptive uh, scheduling so that's all for this video thank you and assalamualaikum